Let's move on to talk about Scotland for a bit. It's unbelievable this has to be said, but Scotland's top police officer has announced that if you are a male rapist, you will no longer be allowed to self-identify as a woman um, as regards to the police. So until now, there was a policy of essentially self-ID. If you said you were female, the police officers would treat you as female for all intents and purposes. This obviously relates to um, the even more serious scandal of um, trans women rapists being placed in in female prisons in Scotland until that was put a stop to. I mean, Zoe, are we finally seeing some common sense? I mean, even the fact that we have to, you know, make this move is still shocking to me. It's so embarrassing that while Russia and China and Iran are busy kind of cooking up the end of the world, the West has literally got its knickers in a twist about, you know, who's a girl and who's a boy and what private parts mean and who, the, you know, so embarrassing. It's so, as you say, cringe. Um, I mean, is the tide turning? I mean, I've, I've written the odd thing about how, you know, JK Rowling has, has moved the needle in various ways and certain kind of things suggest um, not only, you know, the, the cast report, but many other things that maybe the tide is turning. I don't think the tide is turning because I think it's too late. Mm. The damage has, the ship has sailed for the tide turning. The damage has gone. The toxin has spread. I mean, I think when you talk to sort of Gen Z or or, or whatever, it, it's gone in so deep that they don't, they now repeat um, just, they parrot that, you know, gender is purely a construct and sex is a construct. And so I, I don't know. I, I have to say, I think that, yes, it's good that in some, you know, maybe, you know, governments, Scotland law, you know, is starting to reflect some semblance of going back to kind of just, just basic epistemological mm. norms. Yeah. But I think by now, but we live in, you know, the cultural damage, yeah, has been done. Yeah, Tom. I think it's a reminder as well that because I think we've all been struck by how as, as soon as you feel like you've pushed it down in one institution, it pops back off in, in mm -hmm. another, or you feel like there's a particular win. The CAS review felt like that for a lot of people, not least because this Labour government have at least kind of rhetorically backed its recommendations, whilst in other policies it's pursuing things like um, the um, conversion therapy bill and so on. Yeah. Um, going back on that to a certain extent. But it's a, it's a, remark, it's a bit like, you know, the kind of Ibram X. Kendi thing. <laughs> it's not enough to be not racist. You have to be actively anti-racist. I feel like it's not enough for institutions now to just not be lost to gender ideology. They've really got to be actively trying to push it out of the processes, yeah. of the way in which these things have gone, and not in a kind of purge-like fashion, but just to say, we need to return to just um, objective reality, biological facts. That's not a big ask yeah. of an institution like the prison service or the health service um, or the legal profession. Mm. That surely should be fundamental. Those things surely should be fundamental to all of them. But I think there's been this kind of sense that it would, um, I guess, collapse under the weight of scrutiny, yeah. collapse under the weight of people realizing what was going on and also collapse under the weight of its own ridiculousness, gender ideology that is. And I think we're starting to find that whilst there are moments like this, as we've seen with Police Scotland, encouraging signs that people are beginning to twig. Um, even the police chief saying something quite explicitly, only men commit this crime. Yeah. Which is something that you could imagine them trying to hedge mm. in, an, in a really mm. embarrassing fashion mm. even a few years ago, that um, there's much more to be done. Still, what, yeah. what's, what's the latest on Starmer's um, circumlocutions mm. around this issue? Does he still say? That, Is what, he still on 99.9% of penises? Yeah, yeah I, I think that he, he says. I think the last time he was asked about it, he says, well, I've always said that sex is biological. Oh, but that doesn't well, no, quite answer. He didn't. The, yeah. First of all, he didn't because <laughs> we've had the, yeah. you know, 99.9% .9 of women don't have penises. Uh, my my <laughs> favorite one was when during British during the election campaign and they would say to him, you know, is a woman an adult human female? And he just said, I agree with Tony Blair. Mm. That's all he could yeah. bring himself to say. He couldn't yeah. say yes. Yeah. He couldn't say, I agree with Rosie Duffield. Obviously, he couldn't say, I agree. Yeah. It's almost like... It, it, Deference to Tony Blair is one line that he's always willing to <laughs> stake out, but beyond that, he's still Actually, that's probably the best thing around. about speaking as a, as a Blairite. Um, <laughs> that's the one thing I can probably respect. There you go. And it's it's funny, yeah, but as, as Tom said, you know, they are accepting the cast review. Even the SNP have actually accepted the cast review. Um, and, you know, some of the it's only some of the nuttier fringes that are really trying to push back on that. There's been a big um, hoo-ha in the British Medical Association over it. Lots of activists trying to uh, discredit it. But generally... The good news is that, you know, I have some faith that when the facts are laid out in front of people, they think, oh God, that's a bit of a mistake. But also, as you said, so, you know, the, so much of the damage has been done, whether that's in, you know, the women who have been raped in, in prisons, whether that's the children who have been 
mutilated as a result of thinking of all this well, it, and and the younger generation who who still unfortunately cling to this belief well i think that, it's just that by now maybe even in scotland some people's children have started to say they they want to transition and mm. bind their breasts and the parents are start, suddenly starting to realize how awful and insane mm. so much of this is that isn't the you know the the, the 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 few instances of genuine gender dysphoria which we know is like a, a known um disorder uh, which is, you know, should be treated um, through being trans or whatever. But but this idea that, you know, we, we know now, thanks to people like Abigail Schreier and stuff, mm. that this is a social contagion largely. Yeah. So maybe it's reached the kids of the lawmakers. I don't know.